Here's how the world paid tribute. The Sydney Opera House, a dazzling portrait. In Rio, Christ the Redeemer lit up. In New York, the Empire State Building. But in Paris, the glitters of the Eiffel Tower were turned off, the world a little darker. President Macron came to the British Embassy to sign a book of condolence. He spoke of the Queen as a close friend of France. To you, she was your Queen. To us, she was the Queen. To us all, she would be with us forever. Outside the embassy, flowers were being laid, and among those we spoke to, sadness and respect. I'm sad, yes, because she's the only queen I, I knew in my lifetime. She had her duty as prime concern, and in a democracy where you have five, five year term, it's something that's really striking. The Queen visited France 13 times, more than any other European country. Here in France, there really is a cocktail of sympathy and affection, and it is replicated all over the world. The truth is that politicians may come and go, but the Queen was something unique in global public life. She spent seven decades representing Britain all over the world. America has lowered its flags to half-mast, President Biden saying the Queen had defined an era. And north of the border, an emotional tribute from Canada's leader. Canada is in mourning. She was one of my favourite people in the world, and I will miss her so. In death, confirmation of the Queen's extraordinary fame. Messages from across the whole world from the Pope, from China, the United Nations, even from Vladimir Putin. And in New Zealand, that most profound of honours, a hacker to remember the Queen. In an era of quick celebrity, the world has remembered a public figure who endured for so very long. Adam Parsons, Sky News, Paris.